Kenny McCormick has had one of the strongest and most dynamic evolutions of any character in all of South Park. I've actually been planning to do a full Evolution of Kenny video in the same vein as my Randy Marsh video for a while, but that's a huge undertaking and requires tons of rewatching and research, so while we wait for that, I figured we could talk about something we rarely see from Kenny. Unmuffled, fully comprehensible dialogue. Early in the series, Kenny was mostly used as a punchline, and obviously one of the gags is that his dialogue is fully muffled. But as the series has gone on, they've not only expanded Kenny's role into a more fleshed out character, but granted him the opportunity to actually speak in a variety of different ways. So today, we're going to talk about every time we've heard Kenny McCormick talk. You know, like, properly. Over the first handful of seasons of South Park, Kenny was mostly a punchline. He was obviously a big part of each episode, but he never really felt like a full character rounding out the gang, since most of the time we were just waiting to see how they would kill him in each episode. And I think that this is one of the reasons that his first actual lines of audible dialogue in the series are so impactful. Kenny's death in South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut is the major inciting incident for the entire plot of the film. But this also gives Kenny an entire subplot to himself as he navigates hell and forms a friendship with Satan. They actually tease this plot perfectly earlier in the film, as Kenny leaves home to go see a movie with Stan and the boys, and his mom chastises him for missing church. You go ahead and miss church, and then when you die and go to hell, you can answer to Satan! The South Park movie premiered in the middle of season 3, and so to this point, this was by far the most substantial role that Kenny had ever been given in a South Park story, as he tries to help support Satan through his abusive relationship with Saddam Hussein. You're right, I should leave him. I'm just gonna tell him, Saddam, I'm going to Earth to rule alone. At the climax of the movie, Satan finally takes Kenny's advice and kills Saddam, granting Kenny a single wish as a reward for helping him. Kenny wishes that everything would go back to how it was before Satan came to Earth, meaning he saves his friends, but dooms himself. And this is when we get to see Kenny's face and hear his unmuffled voice for the very first time. Goodbye, you guys. Man, I love this moment. Such a great way to reveal Kenny's face for the first time, and such a lovely, emotional piece of dialogue. They actually teased that this would be the first time we would see and hear Kenny outside of the orange parka in this very first scene of the movie, as he wakes up and we see his hair for the first time before he stuffs himself back into the coat. Man, that's a great movie. Funny enough, the voice actor for Kenny in the film was actually Mike Judge, creator of Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill, and voice actor for countless characters in each of those shows. I was hesitant to count this next example, but I wanted to give it a shout out regardless. In season six, the show decided decided to keep Kenny dead for an entire season, but eventually Cartman drinks Kenny's ashes, mistaking them for chocolate milk mix. This leaves Kenny's soul in Cartman's body, and so occasionally, Kenny speaks through Cartman. Yeah, luckily Cartman's big enough for the both of us. Shut up, Kenny. But not counting this, we wouldn't actually hear Kenny's unmuffled voice for five years after the South Park movie, until season eight's The Jeffersons. This is the infamous Michael Jackson episode where the kids become really concerned for MJ's son Blanket due to his father's neglect. In order to rescue him, they have Kenny disguise himself as Blanket and swap places with them. Thanks a lot for helping us, dude. Yeah, sure, whatever. You just gotta pretend you're Blanket until we can get the real Blanket somewhere safe. Aren't I too big to be blanket? I remember watching this for the first time and it feeling so out of nowhere. After years of just never showing Kenny out of his costume, they kind of just do it. But it is handled pretty funny. All right, but you guys owe me for this. Dude, whatever, at least you finally get to do something. Unfortunately, this ends tragically in a typical Kenny fashion as MJ mistakes him for blanket. No, 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 wait, I'm not blanket. Wee, he can fly, he can ah! fly. Ah, stop! The next time we hear Kenny's voice isn't until season 11's Lice Capades. I remember for years that this was an episode people really hated, but man, I always thought this premise was genius. Showcasing the elimination of lice from the lice's perspective, like it's some kind of apocalyptic event, it's really clever. But the non-lice-centric story involves the kids becoming obsessed with trying to learn who had the lice in their class, assuming it was Kenny. In their assumptions, they strip Kenny down and force a sock bath on him. And as they begin, we can hear him protest. <laughs> Not the clearest line, but certainly clearer than his usual muffled dialogue. The episode actually ends with everyone admitting that they all had lice, so it makes their force clean of Kenny that much more selfish. During some of this final dialogue, we can actually see parts of Kenny's face behind Craig, but just barely. And they end up sock bathing him anyway because he also technically lied. Kids are real assholes sometimes. Interestingly, the next time we hear clear dialogue from Kenny was actually not confirmed to be Kenny until an entire season later. In season 13's The Coon, Cartman tries desperately to become a real life superhero and has have people take him seriously. Unfortunately for Cartman, another hero appears and is instantly taken very seriously. This hero being Mysterion. Ah, Mysterion, thank God you've come. 
What news do you have? There's some graffiti on the bridge again, and the guy at the movie theater is harassing Mexicans again. The entire episode revolves around Cartman and the rest of the kids not knowing Mysterion's identity, and him eventually choosing to reveal that identity to the world to protect the citizens of South Park. However, the big reveal is also played as a joke, as Mysterion reveals his face without saying who he is. Obviously, a hilarious thing to do in South Park, where 90% of the kids have the exact same face. The entire town vaguely reacts in shock with hints to his identity, but no confirmation. I knew it was you! Remember, I even said it before! Wow, a kid from my class was Mysterion. But, of course, the confirmation that Kenny is Mysterion wouldn't come until season 14's Coon and French trilogy. In these episodes, all of the kids wear costumes, and they sort of slowly reveal the identities of each kid over the course of the episodes. I'm sure many figured out that Kenny was Mysterion before they say it, but the second episode of the trilogy, Mysterion Rises, reveals it explicitly. And that he actually has a superpower. What? What is your power? I can't die. I've said before how much I love this reveal and how I think it makes Kenny a much more dynamic character in retrospect, and obviously this entire trilogy and the other superhero themed episodes all feature tons of unmuffled dialogue from Kenny in the form of Mysterion, though he is obviously disguising his voice in the gravelly Batman-esque tone. There is a great moment though where he breaks, when he discovers that his parents were arrested for being members of a cult. What the fuck? I, I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? So, even though most of these episodes aren't featuring Kenny's real voice, we do at least get this one moment. Mysterion is featured in The Coon, Coon 2 Hidesight, Mysterion Rises, Coon vs. Coon and Friends, The Poor Kid, Franchise Prequel, and of course, The Fractured But Whole video game. So, if you're looking for tons of unmuffled Kenny dialogue, these are all great places to start. My personal favorite is The Poor Kid, which features Mysterion, but none of the other superhero personas. Kenny dons the costume and acts as a guardian angel for his little sister after she and Kenny were put into foster care. The idea of Kenny using a superhero persona specifically to help and protect his sister is really really wholesome, and I think a really great piece of development for Kenny as a character. But I'm all alone now. You are not alone. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, I will always be here. They also imply that this is not the first time he's helped Karen as Mysterion. I'm a huge, huge fan of this episode. They also sort of follow up this relationship in the Fractured But Whole DLC, From Dusk Till Casa Bonita, where the new kid and Mysterion try to save Karen from the vamp kids at Casa Bonita. The next time we actually get to hear Kenny clearly is in another of my favorite episodes, A Nightmare on FaceTime. Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny plan to dress up as the Avengers for Halloween, though Stan is forced to work at Randy's new blockbuster, and they have to FaceTime Stan into their trick-or-treating via iPad. However, Kenny is Iron Man. Man, and he basically talks the entire episode through a voice modulator. Stan and Kyle, you take the back entrance. Carbon and I will block him from the side. This sequence was really funny, where the kids try to stop some actual burglars at the convenience store. I always laugh really hard at Kenny's delivery here. Holy shit, they shot this guy! Oh my god! Dude, fuck this, let's bail! I really love this example of Kenny dialogue, just really fun and creative stuff in this episode. The most recent and final time that we've heard unmuffled Kenny dialogue is in season 23's Turd Burglars, a pretty gross episode, as the title might suggest. It's all about the kids trying to steal Tom Brady's turds for fecal transplants because of his perfect microbiome. They've been promised copies of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order if they can make it happen. The episode is also this weird Dune parody, with Brady's crap being referred to as the Spice Melange. In order to get into Brady's house, House, they pretend Kenny is a dying Patriots fan there to meet Tom, and for a moment while hearing all the kids' thoughts, we can hear Kenny's thoughts unmuffled. Why did I agree to this? I don't even have a machine to play Fallen Order on. And, for now, that is the last time we've heard Kenny clearly in any South Park media. I appreciate that they tend to do this very sparingly, and often very creatively and with good reason. Some of these episodes are my favorites in the series, and I think Kenny's sacrifice in the movie is probably one of my favorite South Park moments of all time. I really love a good Kenny-focused episode, and I really hope that we get more of them soon. If you want a full list of episodes where we can hear Kenny's voice, here they are in release order. The movie, South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, Season 8, Episode 6, The Jeffersons, Season 11, Episode 3, Lice Capades, Season 13, Episode 2, The Coon, Season 14, Episodes 11 through 13, The Coon and Friends Trilogy, Season 15, Episode 14, The Poor Kid, Season 16, Episode 12, A Nightmare on FaceTime, Season 21, Episode 4, Franchise Prequel, The Game, South Park the Fractured But Whole, and Season 23, Episode 8, Turd Burglars. And there you go. I love Kenny, so stay tuned. I will do that full character evolution video on him relatively soon. I really just want to do him justice. Alright, peace. Johnny! Two challenge.